Hello everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Samurai 7 Retrospective. And the reason this edition is special is because in this episode, we will be comparing Samurai 7 with Seven Samurai, the source material that this anime is based off of and one of the most influential movies of all time. Hey, quick little post-production note here. Um, due to copyright issues, most of the clips from the actual movie had to be cut out and condensed into sort of still frame images. I did this by simply turning the speed on the scenes down from normal speed to 2.000002 in my editor, so if the frames seem to jump every now and again, that is normal. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you, there is some limited degree of movement. And I just wanted to put this in here because I know if someone saw this video without knowing that, they'd probably question why I wouldn't use actual clips from the movie, but they're very stringent about copyright with this production, even though it is quite dated. Anyways, that also explains the delay for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy it anyways. I did put a lot of work into it, and I did uh, have fun making it. So uh, thanks for your time, and also remember that since this uh, little post note adds about a minute to the video, the character stuff isn't going to start at 2340 and more about 2440. Anyways, back to the video. Now, for quick context sake, Seven Samurai is Kurosawa's masterpiece, and it was made in 1954. Hence, it's in black and white, and is quite old. However, that doesn't detract from the fact that it is one of the most influential works of film from that era, if not film in its entirety. And it's not hard to cite parallels between it and later productions whose aspects it may have inspired. However, the point of this video is not to analyze Seven Samurai itself. As, again, as one of the most influential pieces of all time, I feel that's beyond the scope of the video. It's simply to compare the anime that has been the subject of our previous analysis with the source material in question. Now, Seven Samurai is three and a half hours long, with a six or seven minute intermission around the one hour and fifty minute mark, so it is quite a hefty production. However, we should note that that is still only about 12-20 minute segments if we wanted to compare it to the anime, which is 26 episodes long. So let's just see what happened with an additional 14 episodes of content. To start, we're going to be comparing the plots and just kind of overviewing them. Then we'll move into the little character details and miscellaneous things I thought were notable. Now, the plot of Seven Samurai in Samurai 7, of course, is that a village is sick of being held down by the bandits which torture and exploit it, and thus seek samurai in order to protect the village. There's a very similar opening scene with bandits nearing and looking over the village, plotting on when to attack it next. Similarly, there's also a meeting scene in the house of the Elder, who decides that they will hire Samurai. However, the first variation between the original movie and the anime adaptation appears here, and that variation is who gets sent to the city. Now, Rikishi is still present, and he still volunteers to go out into the city to recruit Samurai. However, as noted in other videos, Kiara is an anime exclusive character. She doesn't show up in the scene or the movie at all. Instead, three other men are sent with Rikishi to the city. One of which is Monzo, another is Yohei, and I don't remember the fourth man's name. These four go to the city to recruit samurai. In both adaptations of the story, the recruitment team gets to the city where they live with some hecklers. Now at first I thought these weird heckler guys were just kind of a thing that were in the anime in the background. I never paid much attention to them. However, in the original movie they're actually quite important. They kind of psychologically torture Monzo and the others. However, their goading and sadistic nature also is what ends up convincing Kanbei, who is tired of them looking down upon him for refusing to help them. This is an important difference in both the source material and the anime adaptation. At least this has the same result of Kanbei joining the team. Of course, the only reason the team knows about Kanbei in the first place is because, as in both versions, there is a similar scene of a child being held hostage in which Kanbei rescues the child. In both versions, Kanbei uses some sort of disguise. In the original movie, he pretends to be a monk and offers rice to the bandit holding the child hostage. While in the anime version, he simply uses a, a false name, uh, which I thought was interesting that they both kind of tried to keep the element of disguise present. This also leads to the scene in both versions where Katsushiro asks Kanbei to be his master. However, in the original source material, this goes very differently. In the anime adaptation, where he's very bluntly refused at first. Kanbei informs him that he doesn't agree with this, although he, he doesn't necessarily shoo him away. In fact, pushing him along with him to avoid a Kikuchio, who shows up in this scene in the original movie, to kind of just stare Kanbei down. Again, this is a difference between the anime adaptation and the original version. This then leads us to the trolling hecklers, which, as we mentioned earlier, are the ones that persuade Kanbei to join instead of Kiara. And this really kind of gets us right into the recruitment phase of, the, of both the anime and the original source material. However, due to the source material's length, this of course is a rather quicker process. 
Instead of Barobe being introduced with the arrow scene, he is instead introduced with the stick test scene, where Ketsushiro holds a stick over his head in the doorway to strike him, however Grobe notices before he even enters and passes the test. There's also a humorous moment where they employ the stick scene on some other person who, if you were not familiar with the original movie but had seen the anime, you might have thought was Grobe. However, that guy leaves. And that was kind of funny. The team does experience a setback when the rice is stolen. In the anime, this is done almost as soon as the group enters the town, and it's kind of resolved by Katsushiro. However, in the original source material, this happens after they start recruiting other samurai, and is instead resolved when Katsushiro simply throws money at the problem. He literally <laughs> throws money at the villagers to go buy more rice. While the methods Katsushiro employs are different in both versions, this is still a good establishment of his character as someone who believes in righteous virtue and such. Anyways, the recruitment process speeds along, and Shichiroji is the third samurai to join, now, the anime takes a lot of liberties with how he joins the team. In the anime, Kanbei and the group are on the run from city authorities and flee to Shichiroji's hotel, where they later recruit him and he goes along with them to the caves. However, in the source material, Shichiroji just kind of shows up, recognizes Kanbei, and says, Yeah, I got nothing to do. Let's do it. And he joins up almost immediately. This is a good example of how the anime kind of embellishes or stretches the source material, as the Shichiroji joining in the anime is kind of the result of a bigger action that is also an anime adaptation addition, the Samurai Sweep of the City, and therefore takes up a lot more time. If we figure in the Sweep episode and, you know, Shichiroji's episode, it's probably about 40 minutes of getting Shichiroji to join, where in the movie it's probably a two or three, maybe four minute sequence where he just kind of shows up and says, yeah, I'm down. That's not me complaining about the movie being short, it's not, and it's not me saying that the anime made too much stuff up, i just like to note that, due to the difference in length, the anime does do a lot of its own things to get to the same skeletal points of the movie. With Shichiroji joining third, the group next recruits Heihachi, who again is just chopping wood in some guy's backyard. However, there's no search for him like in the anime, but instead Grobe simply walks up to him and recruits him. Now there are some differences between his character and a lot of the characters in fact between their original version and the anime adaptation, and I'll get into that later. I just thought I would say that now. Next, the group recruits Kuzio, and his recruitment is very different than in the anime. The anime did a lot of additions to his backstory and to his, how he came to join the team. In the anime, of course, he works for the city boss. He's kind of a bad mercenary guy. He just kind of does his own thing. He goes along with the city staff, the bad guys, up until they reach the desert, where he betrays them in order to live his own life. While that does a good deal of fleshing out his character, we should note that that is anime exclusive. In the original movie, he kind of just shows up one day dueling some rando in a field for practice sake, and then when the rando gets mad, he kills him in self-defense. This establishes him as a man who just wants to test his skills, as Kanbei puts it. There is no fight with Kanbei himself, and Kuzio is not someone who actually wants to fight Kanbei at any point in the original movie. In both versions, Kuzio is not recruited immediately, and Kanbei kind of just lets him go off on his own thing. I would like to point out though that this movie does set an important precedence that would later be used in many other movies and in many other animes and many other television productions in general. I'm pretty sure it's not the first to do this, but I did notice it very prevalently in certain scenes. And that of course is the classic man dying to slow-mo. And I'm pretty sure it happened before the Kuzio scene, but I noticed it most prominently during the Kuzio scene. I just thought that was a fun little production note. The group then goes back to their little room in the town and they proceed to talk strategy. Once again, Katsushiro isn't considered a real samurai by Hanbei and is told to leave. In the anime version, he kind of just sits around and says, ah, whatever, I'll go anyways. In this version, he gets upset, walks out of the room for literally two minutes, and then everyone calls him back and he says, yeah, I'm a samurai now, which, you know, I thought was kind of funny, honestly. I, I had no problem with that. One of the beggars then tells them of another samurai who is coming this way that they can recruit and quote, fights like a mad dog. This is Kikuchio, who, as we all know, is not a real samurai, and in this scene is drunk. His recruitment is also vastly different in both versions of the story. In the anime, Komachi sees him as a strong guy and just kind of recruits him, and then he just kind of goes along with the team from there. In the original story, however, he had been aware of the group and had seen Kanbei do some cool samurai stuff and had a sort of inferiority complex towards Kanbei, since, you know, Kakucho knows he's not a real samurai. And this kind of festers in the background. He shows up in a few scenes, doesn't really say anything, stares a few characters down, and in this scene, He's actually recruited last, as he shows up drunk, fails the stick test, pulls out the same genealogy as in both versions, and then ends up 
falling asleep in a pile of hay. Also, for some reason, Kuzio's in the background of this scene the whole time. He just kind of walks up. You can see him in the very back of the frame, and no one notices him. And then Kuzio says, when are we leaving? I'm I'm on board. I thought it was really funny uh, because he literally, no one knows he's there, and then he just joins up. There's no real explanation for this. He never really saw any of the samurai beforehand. He didn't really know what was going on, or at least I don't, I don't know. It's a long movie. I might have forgot a few minutes there, but it just seems as though he shows up randomly and joins, which not the most explanation, but I'm fine with that. That's fine. With the samurai preparing to go back to the village though, we next cut back to the village, where the Monzo making Shino cut her hair plot is still there, and, well, you know, this guy wasn't likable in either version of the story, and I'll leave it there for now. Uh, this will have more impact on it though, in the original source material, and we'll get back to that in a little while. Anyways, as in both versions, Kikuchio follows the group along back to the village, and, as in both versions, no one really welcomes the samurai at the village, but instead, they find an empty square. However, the resolution of the scene is different in both versions. In the anime, Kikuchio kind of just proves that hiding people won't necessarily work and the villagers have to stand up for themselves by trolling everyone in a sort of physical sense. He goes out, he proves he can find where the rice is stored, and he says, hey guys, this isn't going to work. In the movie version, however, he sounds the bandit alarm, summons everyone to the center of the village, makes everyone panic, and then just starts demeaning everyone. He, he kind of just trolls everyone. He yells at them. He like kind of makes fun of them for being scared. And then Kanbei awkwardly laughs and a few of the villagers awkwardly laugh. And then, well, that that just kind of sets the stage. It's, it's a really weird scene. Again, he kind of just resolves the issue by just trolling everyone. He doesn't come off as necessarily trying to be nice or trying to reconcile. He, he really just seems like he's kind of annoyed and he just wants to like screw with people at this point. His character is very different in both adaptations, and we'll get to that. It's a weird scene, but it is kind of funny. Another scene of his that is in both versions is the kimono scene, where while in Rikichi's house, he dances around in his wife's kimono. And again, this triggers Rikichi. However, before this scene in the anime, due to the cave addition to the story, we knew about Rikichi's wife and where she was. However, in the movie, none of that had been explained yet, and this really starts to open Rikichi's character up. At this point in the movie, he's been upset, and we can tell that he hates the bandits, but it hasn't really been expounded upon. We kind of just assume, oh, he's a farmer, he hates them, you know, obviously. But the kimono scene opens up Rikichi's character to us even more as we start to see the story of his wife and whatnot. And again, that's explored more later. Another difference in these two versions of the story is that in the anime, Kuzio trains everyone on bows, which makes sense, it's a ranged weapon. However, in the original movie, the samurai know that they're going against mounted opponents, and as such, they train everyone on spears. So Kuzio trains everyone on spears and not bows. The next point in the movie is one that's entirely original to the movie, and I thought was odd that the anime didn't adapt in any way, especially because the anime does give shoutouts to things that it made irrelevant but still happened in the movie. For example, in the movie, the bandits from earlier are very relevant as they kind of heckled Kanbei in the joining the team, but in the anime, since Kiara persuades him her own way, the hecklers aren't needed in the anime. They could have cut that out, but they kept them in just to prove, you know, they know the source material. It's like an attention to detail kind of thing, and I respect that. So I found it really odd that the anime did not adapt the next kind of little plot point, which takes up like 10-15 minutes of the movie, and that plot point is that the villagers have a stash of plundered samurai weapons and armor. Now, as someone who isn't a real samurai, Kakucho sees no problem with this, and he brings it out, and he flaunts it, and he's like, guys, look at all this cool stuff. However, Shichi Roji of all people has an emotional outburst saying that that's wrong, he wants to out all that out of there, this is disgusting, and then all the samurai kind of share disgust at the villagers over all this. At first this doesn't really make sense, but Kanbi explains it as, we're samurai, we've seen a lot, it's very disturbing for us to see samurai weapons and armor paraded around like that, because those were once worn by living people, that could be us. Now, of course, those were bandits that the armor belonged to, but it's the same concept. I think Kanbei literally says, they don't know what it's like to be hunted. And I see why that's disturbing to the samurai. It's basically the equivalent of someone parading around a dead corpse and saying, yeah, we got him. I mean, it's good that you defended yourself, but it's a little excessive, you know. And this leads to the samurai kind of disliking a lot of the villagers. Chichiroji, in fact, goes as far as to say that he wouldn't mind killing a few. However, in the original movie, this is actually when Kikuchio gives the whole it's everyone's fault speech. 
i.e. the speech where he blames the samurai for victimizing the farmers, and he blames the farmers for being kind of wily and not necessarily the best sports. And this speech is the one that truly reconciles the samurai to the farmers. However, in this version of the story, he only gives it to the samurai. The farmers are not present for this, although they do seem to get along with the samurai better after both this scene and the scene mentioned earlier where Kikuchio just kind of trolls everyone. As the group figures out how to fortify the village, Katsushiro just decides to run off in a flower field and lie down where he meets Shino. Now again in the anime, Shino is just kind of a background character who, having two minutes of fame for having Monzo cut her hair, doesn't really do anything after that. In this version of the story, since Kiara is absent, she's actually the main love interest for Katsushiro, and the two have a very weird and uncomfortable on-screen chemistry. Um, maybe because of how dated the movie is, it just feels odd looking at it from uh, today's perspective. But it really does feel really odd how in most of their scenes she's either laughing very happily or seems extremely upset. And it's not like he did anything crazy either. She just kind of gets upset randomly. And I mean, I, I they explain it. She's like, oh, we're different social classes. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, this, oh, that. And like, it makes sense on paper, but just the portrayal of it's kind of uncomfortable. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's done anything like horrible per se. It just seems like she's kind of upset or unstable a lot. And I just, you know, I just thought I would mention that. Anyway, since she's the main love interest in the original movie, she's actually a lot more important in the original movie, and her role is very downplayed in the anime adaptation. In the original movie, Katsushiro meets her while they're in the flower fields, uh, and since her hair is short, and she says she's a boy, he kind of beats her up, saying she should be training to defend the village, and then finds out she's a girl, and then awkwardly just walks away. The two are later witnessed by Kuzio, who is, is a good sport, he doesn't tell anyone, but he knows what's happening, and as a training, for defense continues, the farmers are organized into squads for both harvesting and for war. Now some of them of course don't want to sacrifice their houses on the other side of the bridge, however Kanbei lays down the law rather quickly, and in this version is shown to be a more military kind of guy. Next there's another tense scene with Shino, which I find uncomfortable, maybe it played differently back then or for different people, but it just seems weird. She always seems like kind of upset, but you can't really tell it, 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 it's it's odd, it's uncomfortable, it's awkward for me. I don't know how others would feel about it. You know, you can see it yourself. It. I just thought I would note that. And next is another scene which the anime adaptation left out. And this is the scene where three of the samurai go to the bandit camp. They figure they're outnumbered, so they should strike first, whittle down their numbers, and try to forward their position a little bit. And this scene actually is where Rikichi's wife, who is unnamed in this version, in the original version, is actually introduced. Again, she's been uh, kidnapped by the bandits, and it's just kind of living with them, and also seems to exhibit some kind of Stockholm Syndrome. As in the original version, she runs back into the burning bandit lair to try and either run from Rikichi, or save a bandit that might have kidnapped her. It is very traumatizing for Rikichi. However, while the anime adaptation has a kind of nice resolution where Rikichi helps his wife get over Stockholm Syndrome and everything goes well, in the original version, she kind of just runs into a burning building and probably dies, while Rikichi has a nervous breakdown in the open, which leads Haihachi to try and drag him back behind cover, which ends up in Haihachi getting shot. Which is another major departure between the anime adaptation and the original version. As in the anime adaptation, Gorobe is the first samurai to die. However, in this version, Haihachi is. I postulate that that's because in the anime, this scene isn't included, this scene is cut out. Therefore, Haihachi's death is kind of cut out, and they have to force it to happen later on, which they do. And Gorobe's is simply next in line, but since that scene is cut out, it's the first one we experience in the anime. Again, though, this is a very traumatic scene for Rikichi, and as in both versions, he has to kind of live with the loss of his wife. However, in the movie version, he doesn't get her back, unfortunately. And this leads to the first funeral scene. And again, this scene is very different than how it is in the anime. In the anime, by this point, Kanbei has left, Robe is buried, everyone kind of just sits on the hill, feels sad for themselves a little bit, and then goes on to the next arc, the woman rescue arc, which is not in the movie at all, I just thought I'd say that. In the original version, though, the group buries Haihachi on uh, the hill, and everyone is sad, of course, and Kakucho tries to raise everyone's spirit by hanging up the new flag of the village on one of the houses. It's the same flag in both versions, however, in this version, the flag is made by Haihachi himself. So it serves as kind of a good memorial to him, and a good way to raise spirits at the same time. However, right after he does this, again in another major difference between the two, the bandits kind of just show up mid-funeral, and then the first battle just kicks off right there, all of a sudden. 
And in this battle, we see that each of the samurai has their posts, and we see another difference in the two versions of the story. In the anime adaptation, the old man, the elder, lives through the whole thing, more or less for the better. However, in this version, he doesn't want to leave his house on the other side of the bridge and basically gets toasted. There is another poignant scene here where Kikuchio rescues a, a baby from that burning building and is kind of disturbed. He has a moment where he says, this baby is me. I was like that at one point. I hate the bandits. That's why I'm a samurai now. And it's a really good character moment for a guy who so far has just been kind of a crazy weirdo. Again, more on that later. And this leads to the first big battle scene and... Obviously, it's the 1950s. The special effects are limited by, you know, the time period. The fight choreography is limited by the time period. And if you look super closely and you watch the scenes at, like, half speed, you can tell that the actors are stabbing the ground next to the guy that fell off the horse and everything. It's not the most realistic all of the time, but that's not something I hold against the movie. The atmosphere at this point is so good that your suspension of disbelief will easily excuse that thought it was something that I did notice. But the battle scene itself goes relatively well for the samurai, other than the losses of the old man and the houses on the other side of the bridge. And there is a piece, and this leads us to one of the in-between battle scenes. Now the anime had these two, it had a few episodes between battles, and a good portion of the movie is also spent between this first battle and the next couple battles. In both versions, Kuzio kind of just goes off on his own to scout and steal a gun, somehow killing three guys on his own and making it back unscathed. While this is the end of that little thing in the anime version, it does have a bigger impact in the, in the original version. As this later inspires Kikuchio in the original movie to try and do the same thing where he also steals a gun and manages to get back. However, again, he's kind of roasted because he did this for his own glory and not necessarily for the team. And as he returns from that sort of solo mission, another battle starts which again goes relatively well for the samurai. They use a strategy of kind of just baiting in a few horsemen, killing them, baiting in a few more, killing them. Uh, they get a few more guys like that. Doesn't work forever though, and Garobe unfortunately gets off screened. We just hear a gunshot, and next thing you know, a few guys are carrying him in, and it's obvious he's not doing too well. He, he just gets off screen, which I thought was kind of weird. But again, I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's a realistic battle, it's chaotic. You don't know when someone's gonna die. No issue with that. This, of course, does darken the mood quite a bit, as it does in both versions. And it leads to the weird conclusion of the Shino Katsushiro arc, where both of them get scared and spend the night rolling around in the hay. That's not an innuendo, look at all that hay. And anyways, Monzo catches her and kind of just relentless, he beats her? Again, he's very unlikable in both versions of the story. And that's the most important thing that happens in this sort of interlude between the second battle and the final battle. Kanbei himself says this will be the final battle because both sides are losing men and it's now or never, basically. This final battle is set in the rain and it goes pretty well for the samurai at first. However, with the bandits going all out, they do inflict some grievous losses on the samurai. Kuzio is the first of the remaining samurai to go down. He just gets shot. This one is on screen. He gets shot, stumbles a little, and then dies in the mud. Very unglamorous death. Again, very realistic. This movie is quite visceral. In both versions, he's the third samurai to die which means that it's time for the final samurai to die. In both versions, again, this is Kikuchio. However, his death is different in the original movie. In the original movie, the bandit lord by this point is hiding because he knows he's screwed, and he hides in the house with all the women that try and take them captive and bargain his way out. Kikuchio knows this, though, and just runs in, sword ablazing, gets shot point blank, and then keeps going and stabs the bandit leader. I like how in both versions of the story, it's this guy who has been screwed over by the system the most, is the guy that ends up taking out the big bad guy. And in the original version, it's just the bandit leader, just some guy with a gang, basically. In the anime adaptation, it is, of course, Ukyo. However, Ukyo is anime exclusive. He's completely original to that. He's not in the original movie. Next, of course, the movie ends on the famous scene of the samurai just kind of recounting what's happened, Kanbei saying that it was the villagers who won and that he's lost again, and, of course, the final shot of the samurai burial mounds, really bringing home the somber message of the pointless nature of violence and conflict. Anyways, with the differences in plot discussed, and I guess the plot of both kind of dissected thoroughly, let's get into some character differences. Now, as mentioned earlier, the movie has a quite a large cast and three and a half hours, so not everyone is going to be completely fleshed out. And the anime has basically 14 additional episodes to add different plot points that expound on different things, and kind of take the characters in their own direction as part of making the adaptation its own thing. 
So I think the best way to organize this section of the video is just to look at different characters and compare the anime version to the source material. And of course, we'll do a little segment on every character that got their own video and any others that I thought were of note. So we'll start with the first samurai that we started with. And that, of course, is Grobe. Now, in the anime version, Grobe is very fleshed out as a guy that loves life. He kind of likes spitting in the face of death. He's a performer, and he's good at what he does. He's a wizened veteran who very much enjoys his life. In the original movie, he's a very similar person. He does enjoy his life. However, he doesn't necessarily make a point of putting on a show of it. He's not as showy, and he just comes off more as a as some guy's dad. I don't know how else to describe it. He just seems like a very nice, amicable guy who's simply there to help. He does look kind of like a used car salesman, but I have no problem with that. I dig the beard. And he's very much closer in the original version than he is in the anime. In the anime, the role of Shichiroji and Grobe is kind of swapped. Because in the original version, Shichiroji, while being Kanbei's friend, doesn't necessarily do that much with him. They share a few jokes and they seem to enjoy each other's company. But they never really confide in each other like they do in the anime. In the original movie, it's actually Garobe that Kanbei seems to confide in most. And the two have a very good, friendly working relation throughout the entirety of the movie, as Garobe naturally assumes a sort of second-in-command position who kind of always knows what Kanbei's thinking. In the anime adaptation, this is kind of taken over by Shichiroji, which I guess makes sense because the two do have a past together, so it makes sense to establish that. It makes sense to establish Shichiroji, is kind of Kanbei's old friend and second in command, as opposed to Garobe. However, in, in the original movie, it is Garobe. And while his characterization is similar, I just thought that was a very important difference between the two versions to note. Next, let's touch on Kuzio. In both versions of the story, Kuzio is just some guy who's very good at what he does and kind of just enjoys being good at what he does. However, while his character is similar in both versions, how he necessarily comes to join the team and a few other things are not. As mentioned earlier, the anime has a very, very long sort of subplot where Kuzio betrays the wrong side to join up with the samurais and the right side, living his own path while being very helpful to those around him. In this version, Kuzio just kind of does his own thing for a little bit and then again randomly just instant transmissions into the background of one scene with the samurai and says, when are we leaving for combat? Kind of just joins up randomly and goes along with the group. However, he does talk slightly more in the original movie, which I thought was funny. And he comes off as a as an old guy who just kind of likes memeing. I, I don't know how to describe it really. In the anime version, he barely smiles. He's very serious. He's over the top, kind of like edgy anime sword guy. He's he's cool, but he doesn't talk. He's like, I'm just here to get the job done, guy. It's gonna. In the original movie, though, he's actually an older gentleman, and he seems to be more acquainted with life and had a lot of life experiences. And we see him go along with a lot of the jokes that Hihachi cracks. He's usually laughing. He usually seems to be in a good mood. He's very good at what he does. And he does seem to take the mission seriously, but he doesn't necessarily seem to take himself too seriously. He enjoys laughing. He has a few funny scenes. I think he even cracks a joke at one point. In fact, while I do like both versions of the character, I think I prefer the original version, as it does make sense that the skilled swords guy would be an older gentleman, someone who's had a lot of experience, and that an older person would kind of just have fun memeing on everyone, or like dunking on everyone. Like he even jokes at one point, which I thought was hilarious, because from the anime, he's super serious, he never talks. And in the movie, he's serious, he's good at what he does. But it's obvious he's, he's also got a, a funnier side to him. He doesn't take everything super seriously. And he's a good mixture of experience and skill, along with knowing when to tone it down and when not to be too serious. I do like his characterization in the movie quite a bit. It's a very fun background character. Uh, however, in the movie, uh, he does not dual wield, unfortunately. They all use, for the most part, standard katanas. On the topic of weapons, let's next get the Shichiroji. Now, one of Shichiroji's standout quirks in the anime is that he uses a spear while everyone else uses swords. In the original movie, though, he uses a sword for most of his battles. He only uses a spear at the very end when he's fighting mounted opponents, which makes sense. You want a longer reach if you're fighting a guy on a horse. So I thought that was a neat little thing that the anime kind of just ran with. But his characterization in the anime and in the original movie is quite different as well. In the anime that we've looked at so far, he's a very calm man. He's kind of Kanbei's right-hand man as a guy who's been with him through a lot and knows how he operates and thinks very well. He's a very humanizing person, and he kind of helps Kanbei come off as more relatable. He gets that ball rolling, as we mentioned in his video. And he's 
a very calm, capable, confident man. In the original version though, while he is still very likable, and he does seem to have some kind of relationship with Kanbei, his character is more volatile. We can see this especially in the scenes with plundering, where while Kanbei is obviously upset that the villagers plundered the dead bandits, Shichiroji straight up says he'd want to kill a few for that. And this is basically the difference between him in the anime and him in the original movie. In the anime, he's almost never upset. Maybe he gets a little tense sometimes. But in the uh, original movie, he does get annoyed in a few occasions. He gets mad on a few occasions. There's a pre-mentioned scene where he said he would kill a few people over what they had done. But he still helps Kanbei's characterization. His character is still quite good. Still a competent warrior. Still seems to know what he's all about. However, again... As mentioned in the Gorobei segment, he doesn't seem as close to Kanbei in the original source material as he does in the new anime adaptation. However, his character is relatively similar and is for the most part still a nice, relatively easygoing man. He does look very different though, just, to, just so you know. Again, Seven Samurai is a realistic movie with realistic aesthetics and obviously Samurai 7 is its uh, own very unique aesthetics and of course you gotta take in the fact that it's an anime. And that's why Shichiroji looks like this when animated, and he looks like a used car salesman in his true form, if you will. On to the next character, though, Katsushiro. In both versions of the story, Katsushiro is kind of like the young guy who everyone just... They, they let him tag along, but they know that if push comes to shove, someone needs to tag along with him, make sure he's okay. And is kind of seen as Kanbei's, like, apprentice. But his characterization and his kind of arc and uh, actions are very different in both versions of the story. In the anime, of course, Katsushiro has a weird love affair with Kiara. He kills a guy who's scouting. He has a very dramatic episode with that. He has a lot of pain. He learns a lot. He grows a lot. He trains relentlessly. And in the end, he kind of just says, I'm going to go do my own thing. I've learned what it's like to be an independent man. To which Kanbei says, you have sport. Take my sword. Very fulfilling moment of self-realization where Katsushiro has basically completed his training, shown that he knows what he's doing and that he knows who he is as a person now and that he's ready to be a warrior who can stand on his own. Very marked growth and very obvious character arc. He goes from a naive young warrior who gets dunked on constantly to a competent young man who can stand on his own and now truly knows what it's like to be a samurai. In the movie though, Katsushiro's arc is kind of all over the place. And he doesn't actually do almost anything. In the anime, he gets into a lot of fights, which he loses a lot of, but he's out there doing stuff. In the original movie, though, he's kind of coddled by Kanbei. Kanbei knows that this guy isn't really up to the task in front of him. So instead of letting him just get beat up and learn, Kanbei kind of just says, Oh, Katsushiro, go with Kuzio. Or, Oh, Katsushiro, stick by me. Or, Oh, Katsushiro, stay behind. And as a result, Katsushiro doesn't really get to do too much. And his character is more devoted to the Shino arc, which, I mean, that's fine. But I do really like how the anime expanded on his character and really gave him a more concrete arc. On the topic of the Shino arc, uh, it's funny that in both versions of the story, Katsushiro just kind of like falls in love with someone who is either not completely interested or is unstable for some reason. That's not to belittle either Shino or Kiara. It's just saying that this guy has had some awkward conversations. While the characterization of the two is very similar, naive young man, his growth is markedly increased in the uh, anime adaptation, which was something I found a pleasant departure from the source material. It's nice that he got a lot more to do and that he grew a lot more. In addition, and because of this, his relationship with Kanbei is also a lot more fleshed out in the anime. Uh, and that's partly due to Kanbei's difference in characterization as well, though it is a nice departure from the source material. On the topic of Kanbei, his characterization is also very different in both versions. Starting with the anime version that we've talked about already, anime Kanbei is a very cold, serious man. He comes off as kind of a heartless loner, although he does prove himself to be a good man, training Katsushiro, defending the villagers for basically nothing, and establishing himself as a loser, but a righteous loser. In the original movie though, while he does stick to the idea of being a righteous loser fighting lost battles for righteous causes, who he is as a person is actually very different. It's interesting because a lot of characters share different events and arcs, but similar characterization, where Kanbei shares a similar arc, but very different characterization. In the movie, he's pretty warm from the start. He's pretty likable from the start. He just comes off as some guy's dad, just going about giving good advice and saying common sense sentences to help those around him. He's never really rude, 
He never really puts on a mean face unless it's like a battle or something. He's always welcoming and warm to those around him. He never comes off as cold, which is one of the defining traits of anime Kanbei. So I just thought it was a very different version of Kanbei. And I guess it makes sense because in the original movie, he's more of a central character. He's central in both the anime and the original movie, but with Kiara's absence and with Katsushiro kind of taking a back seat, Kanbei is arguably the main character of the movie. He's more present and he's much more welcoming, which again, I have no problem with. I like both versions of Kanbei, though honestly, if I had to hang out with one, I would probably hang out with movie Kanbei. He just, it's so odd because in the anime, he almost never smiles. And in the original movie, he just seems like he's having fun a lot of the time. He laughs at Kikucho's weird or dumb jokes. He kind of memes himself sometimes. It, it, it's a very different characterization and I do like both versions of it. Although I think that I do appreciate the warmth of the source material more than the austere exterior present in the kind of anime version. Again, the anime is longer, so it gave him more time to develop and grow into a warmer version of himself. But I don't mind seeing that version right off the bat as they do in the movie. Speaking of warmth, let's next talk about Haihachi. Now, again, the anime does add a little bit to his character in that in the anime, he's a former traitor was kind of redeeming himself and that motivates him to join the quest and simultaneously not take himself seriously. He claims to be a pacifist, he hates fighting, he loves rice, and he wants to help the team in order to redeem himself for his past treachery. In the movie though, he's probably the samurai with the least amount of screen time and he doesn't have that traitor arc baked in. There's no redemption story for this guy, he's just going along because he wants to be a helpful guy and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, he's found a similar way, cutting wood for some random person. However, the recruitment scene is also a little different. There's the same part where he humorously stumbles at being asked to cut down bandits. But when asked if he's actually cut down anyone before, in the anime, Haihachi says no, he hates violence. He thinks it's not good. In the original movie, though, he says yes. Once I start chopping, I can't stop. I don't know why they changed that in the anime. I guess to kind of put their own spin on the character. But in the movie, he comes off as kind of bloodthirsty. And I don't know if that was a joke or not. It could have been a joke because he does share the similar characteristic of being a very fun-loving, very funny guy who just serves to lift the spirits of the group. In fact, I think Grobe or kind of establishes that that's why they recruited him. He straight up says, yeah, Haihachi's mid, but he says funny things. So yeah, he can come along. And of course, his death is different as mentioned earlier. In the anime, he dies destroying the capital in like a redeeming explosion. In the original movie, however, he dies saving Rikichi from his own impulsive actions. So he's still a good character, just not much to touch on when comparing the two because in the movie he's probably the least present of the samurai. Finally, that leads us to uh, Kikuchio, and I saved him for last in this case because his characterization is radically different. In the anime, of course, he's kind of a fun, bumbling oaf who respects everyone around him once he warms up to them and gives it his all all the time. He comes off as mentally stable, competent, and while funny, generally aware of the situation and, you know, consequences. And you're probably thinking, it's really weird that you would say those adjectives. They're so vague and kind of self-explanatory. But the reason I do is because in the movie, Kikuchio is almost a complete, completely different person. In fact, movie Kikuchio even has inconsistencies within the movie, as he tends to have mood swings or different phases, I guess you would say, throughout different parts of the movie. In some scenes, he's very warming and welcoming and understanding. In other scenes, he seems like a just a malcontent who's kind of just upset and annoyed at everyone. There's other scenes where he comes off as a straight up sociopath a few times. There's scenes that show that he's obviously aware of what's going on and that he wants to fight with the villagers because it's the right thing to do. There's other scenes where he just seems to have almost no idea what's going on and it's just start yelling at everyone. He is all over the place in this movie. And I dig it. He, he, he's obviously a man who's very traumatized by his past. And they don't say that is the reason he's unstable, but knowing what we know now today about how trauma affects people, especially when in their childhood, it does make sense that a man who's been through that much would be a little unhinged every now and again. And his characterization of someone who's been through violence and is now forced to be in it again is very accurate. He's trying to make the best out of a bad situation. However, he can't always control himself that well, and as such, just goes about doing either really weird or impulsive things. Some of the highlights include wearing samurai armor that he stole from a dead guy, the weird scene where he trolls all the villagers. This is literally the first time he meets them, and he literally just sounds the fire alarm for no reason, and then starts berating everyone. 
A lot of weird moments with this character. Very eccentric, very weird, possibly a little unhinged. And whoever was playing him just loved it. And you can tell because even when he's in the background, he's kind of making weird faces. He makes a lot of weird faces when he talks. He just kind of says random things randomly. A lot of his deliveries are either very emotional, not necessarily the most coherent because of that. He shows himself to be something of a drunk. Just a very all over the place portrayal of this character, which makes for a character in and of itself. It's obvious that this guy is a guy with trauma and that he's been through a lot and he's trying his best to get through it, but isn't necessarily the best at it. So he's just kind of impulsively bungling his way through things, which does make sense that his character is a kind of a tragic one when you think about it in the movie because it's clear that this man has psychological damage. He has been through a lot, and he is trying his best to get over that and to like help people around him not go through similar things. So he does prove himself to be a good fighter in that sense, and a moral fighter in that sense. It's just that it's a very pronounced struggle, and it leads him to taking a lot of all-over-the-place actions, which may not necessarily be the best or the nicest. And it's a very different characterization. While in both versions, he is kind of the comedy funny big guy in the anime they obviously tone down a lot of that and he's just kind of a comic relief character with a serious side in the original movie though he's more of a i don't want to say sociopath he obviously has a moral compass but I, I'll, I'll say a little unhinged he comes off as unhinged in some scenes in the movie and it's a very radically different characterization i have no problem with it though as again it is showing the effects of trauma on someone trying to deal with it as they do something else that is also traumatizing, all in the name of trying to help others. So again, his character is still interesting and fleshed out. It's just a very different character. Now that the samurai are discussed, I'd like to quickly touch on Komachi, Kiara, and Ukyo. And I mean quickly, because I'm, all I'm going to say is they're literally not in the original movie. They're just anime original characters, which help add to another arc of the anime. They help flesh out the anime be its own thing. I have nothing against them in the anime. I've touched on how Kiara's execution wasn't necessarily well done. However, I've also talked about how I really think Ukiyo was a great addition to the source material. It helped this adaptation really come into its own. So I don't really hold the anime original characters down because they're anime original. I, I like Ukiyo, and I think Kiara would have been good if they did something more of her character than nothing at all. I just thought I would mention that they're anime original, and that that is a great departure from the source material. Another great departure from the source material is the handling of Rikichi. Now in Rikichi's video I've mentioned how in the anime he's just kind of a background character who shows that yes life does suck for the peasants and he's a great display of how unfair life is towards them and how rough it can be. He also does that in the original movie. However in the original movie his role is much more pronounced. Since Kiara isn't in the original movie that means that Rikichi is kind of the central villager character for us to get a real glance at how things are in the village. And his characterization is much more fleshed out because of that. Again, in the anime, he's a relatively stoic guy who's had a lot of tough times and is not doing the best because of it. In the original movie, Rikichi's just an emotional roller coaster. We see this guy cry, we see this guy get mad, we see this guy just go through almost everything as he's lived a very unpleasant life so far, or at least as of late, and he's just not having it anymore. Although they don't necessarily add much to his arc in terms of events, the movie just adds a lot more in terms of his screen time and presence, and this allows him to just capture a lot of the scenes he's in. It allows him to just come into his own, whether he's crying at how unfair life is, or whether he's trying to convey the need to fight, or whether he's just sitting there quietly talking to himself or the samurai. Again, while he isn't necessarily given too many additional tasks to do, he doesn't necessarily do that much when we look at it objectively, his presence is just so much more pronounced that it really lets us get a look into a man who's suffered a lot and see that effect on his psyche. Finally, that just brings us to a few tertiary characters I'd like to touch on briefly. Now, a lot of tertiary characters from the anime obviously aren't in the original. The anime had a lot more time to add stuff like that in the background, and it's not necessarily needed in the movie. The tertiary characters that are in the movie include the elder of the village who, in the anime, goes on to basically win the battle and be fine. However, in the original movie, he kind of just burns to death in his mill home and, uh, well, not necessarily the happiest ending for him. Another tertiary character is Monzo. He's in both versions. He does slightly more in the movie version. I still hate him. At least he didn't try to sell out the samurai directly to the bandits though at this time, so good on him for being slightly less scummy in the original, I guess. And that basically wraps up a look at the plot and the characters. Again, 
Seven Samurai is one of the most influential movies of all time, so it's very surprising to me that Samurai 7 is in turn one of the most obscure animes of all time. So I just wanted to do this little comparison video to compare the two, show the differences, and kind of make a final evaluation on what I think about the job they did adapting it. And that final opinion of mine is that they did a very good job adapting it. They kept the core skeletal points of the series the same. It's about samurai who do the right thing and defend the village from bandits, even though that requires the use of violence, which in and of itself is a negative and hurts everyone involved, even if they're fighting for a good cause. The theme that conflict is not good, but it must be done sometimes, though it's still not good even if that's necessary, is still very much present. Kanbei still talks about how every battle is a losing battle, and how that it's unfortunate that it came to this. They keep the skeleton of the plot the same, and they keep the core components of the theme the same. However, with the anime having a much longer run times, and the necessary need to make it its own thing, the anime does a very good job in establishing a unique setting, adding a few extra characters to flesh everything out, adding an additional arc to increase runtime and help it stand on its own, and just all the additions that help it make it its own thing. There are almost no additions to the anime which I feel drag down the series. Now the movie is obviously more impactful, objectively, however I think there's no problem with liking both versions of the story. And there's almost no addition the anime made that I felt was tacked on or bad. The only exception perhaps being what they did to Kiara, but I don't hate her character, I don't hate the fact that she's in the, in the anime, I just think that they could have handled it better, as I've mentioned multiple times before. In conclusion, I think that these are both masterpieces, and that both should be enjoyed, as one is one of the greatest films of all time, a great film memory, if you will, and the other is almost a completely unheard of anime today, a great obscure anime memory.